Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Welcome to a special edition video. Um, this is uh, uploaded on a different day than I normally do. It's a special video on uh, rebuilding a an electric motor that didn't work out as well as many of the other ones I had. I don't want you to think that everything I do is a success. A lot of times and many times there fails, but uh, you always uh, you learn more from fails than you do from successes. And this was just one of those cases, so I put together this video. I'm going to uh, put it out there today for some of you that might enjoy a, a good motor uh, tear down, electric motor. So let's get right to it. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, nice little uh, Dayton motor picked up at Jacktown here. Uh, this one here, this is just the way I got it. Again, paid $10 for this. And uh, it spins easy. Shaft is rusted, as you can see but uh has oil caps on there well one cap anyway probably wasn't oiled in many years what do you say we take it apart see what's going on see if we can get this running real quick Now, sometimes there's no space in, there's no notch or anything to put a screwdriver in to give it a twist. There's no way that this looks like it come off. So what I usually do then, because we took the screws out, see these long screws that hold the, the bell ends on. Okay, so once we took that off, there's really nothing holding it on here, just this, you know. So what I like to do is take a soft blow hammer, and these things are fantastic if you don't have one, you need to get one and strike down especially here where there's a lot of meat on the uh threaded areas and uh, strike with a striking blow a glancing blow to pull it as you're striking it to loosen it up because a lot of times it just needs a good loosening up so a couple shots not too hard you don't want to break any casting you just want to loosen here we go you see see what we just did here see we created that little seam there and that's what we want. Now you could slip a screw, but you know, if you just work this around, work it, and you'll see it's opening up. Okay, just work it around until you get a screwdriver in there. Okay, you can see now we got the one side pulled right out. Now this side right here, remember it's only attached usually with two leads. Here we have a, um, uh, you got to look at which leads will come off easiest here. We have actually three leads here, but you could take the two, you could take the two red off here and over there, but you got to mark them first. So I'll do that later, but look how nice, look how nice the windings look here. Look how nice everything looks. So I'll mark those and take it off. And uh, and then we'll take a look at over here. Okay, you can see what we did here. Here's the one end that goes on there. And you can see this is the only rusted part. Everything on these motors look re real nice, right? So that's all you have to worry about. And also, if there's any of these, you don't want to lose any of these spacer washes here. So be careful when you're turning this back and forth that these don't fall off because that's that adjusts your end end to end play. Okay, now I think I know why this motor was removed from service. A lot of times these motors were used for oil burners, things like that. Now you could see here, if you look here, you see there's two windings. There's a primary winding and a secondary. The secondary is always the larger winding, usually. And you could see here that the primary winding is black. You see that? That is caused from excessive heat something caused this to go excessively hot and that's why it looks like we got an issue with the primary winding now what they would normally do is we they'd have to remove this and rewind it i mean they do that in foreign countries here they just toss it and have a new one but sometimes you can operate a motor the primary just gets it started once it's up to speed sometimes since the secondary takes over remember when the switch opens up the secondary takes over so sometimes you can have a motor that will run on a secondary like for a fan or something like that but um 
interesting to see something like this, and now you know what the problem was. Maybe it came from an oil burner and had trouble starting up or was slow starting. So we'll see what we can do with this. We'll put it back together. Worst comes to worst. Sometimes you get something like this and you have a, a motor that you find that the shaft is is banged up or, or uh, the shaft is damaged. Now you have the rotor. So you never throw this out because that's the rotor's still good, but the windings are bad. Okay, on now the beauty of these motors, again, they're so simple, but uh, here everything is written on this particular tag here. You can see the model number. It's a one third of a horse, 1725 RPM, which is considered slow speed, 115 volts, 6.6 .6 amps, 60 hertz, all normal. Continuous duty, that means it's meant to run all the time. Insulating classes A. Um, <clears throat> what type of frame you have in case you have to get a stand. Bearings, BRGS is bearings, and these use sleeve type. They have a sl sleeve type that's they're just oiled. And um, over here, you can see it tells you about oiling. It says here, you see, required each bearing use SAE 20 oil, continuous duty every year. You oil it. That's if you're using it for like an oil burner. Uh, intermittent duty every two years. That's if you're using it for like a drill press. And occasional duty every five years. That's if you're using it for like a planer or something and you're not a woodworker. So very simple to hook up. There's two lines coming in, uh, which when you you're, have your wire, you have three lines. You have a ground and two, a hot and a neutral. So here is your hot and neutral. Get connected to these two. This would be your ground. You see by indicated by the green line here. And uh, very simple hookup. If you wanted to reverse direction of the motor, this red line and black line, you would remove and, repl and reverse. That's how you reverse direction. And then close everything up. The wire comes in here to feed it. So let's see if we can't get this running. Even though the primary looks like it's burnt out, sometimes you could spin it and get it working on the secondary. Let's okay, try Okay, now I want to show you, this is why you never buy, you gotta be careful when you buy a, a motor, it's always hit and miss, you know, because especially if the wires have been removed, if the, that's always a, a bad indication if the wires were taken, because a lot of these, when they take them, when a, a serviceman comes and takes them out of a burner or something like that, they take the wires, they throw them out, and then you'll have guys who pick them up and whatever on the street and say, hey, I'll sell it, you know, $10 at a, or $5 at a, a flea market. And that's why you always have to be careful. And I'm going to show you something, especially you have to be careful because they can might plug it in and show you, say, look, it works. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take the plug here. I'm going to plug it in. Now, I'm sure I got to be careful. Now, I have the kilowatt meter here. I'm going to plug it in now. <laughs> Okay, you heard the centrifugal switch. You saw it was running, right? It sounded good, but it was drawing like 15 amps. So obviously this thing is overheating or something's getting hot in there. If you tried to run this thing, it would it would cause you a problem. I, I was drawing a full 15 amps starting this up. Very dangerous. This thing is only supposed to draw 6.6 .6 amps. So something that that primary coil is heating up. There's a short, something like that. This is garbage. So what you have to do, and this is something you always should do when you're you're getting rid of a, a, a I'll show you here. Whenever you're getting rid of something like this and going into the garbage or something, always cut the cord like that. That usually shows people that there's something wrong when its cord is cut like that. So that's the way this should be. And also you should write no good on here, whatever, but it is good for parts, especially the stand, things like that. And uh, it's good experience to fool around with these, but you see, this is one of those things that could cause a fire drawing 15, 16 amps. Wouldn't last long before you have a big problem. So there we go. A little short uh, special edition today on electric motor, fail but really it was a success i really enjoyed doing this project even though it didn't work out like i thought it would but i I'm, you every time you do something you learn a little bit more and i hope you learn from this so thanks so much for tuning in hope you have a great day take care now bye bye